Okay, everyone. My name is David Trutchell. I'm with Wallfacer Design. Today, I'm doing a live stream of some work for my Mica sunglasses project. I'm going to edit a CAD file. I'm going to do a little bit of a review of how the product's been going. It's on the next steps. Um, I haven't done this before, so we'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully, you enjoy and you learn some stuff out of this. So, here's the guiding document. So, today, um, I isolated a couple of things I need to change in my design document based off of um, some experiences yesterday, which I'll show you in a minute. So we're going to primarily change the nose pad shape for these glasses. We're going to increase the wire diameter holes for the arms uh, to about 1.6 millimeters across. We're going to make the inset for the lenses a little bit deeper as well. And I'm going to modify the current arm notch system uh, so that it forces the user to use a case instead of wearing them on a shirt just because these are a little more delicate right now and because I'm going for simplicity I want these to work and hold up for a while. Um, get them out of the door first. So um, from there I might explore some other options but uh, that's kind of the game plan for today. So. This is a response to yesterday. Um, finally assembled the second prototypes of these lenses. Um, so I got all my supplies together, sanded a 3 printed model I made of an existing file. Uh, right now the arm like secure points are really fragile. Um, I really, really don't like this approach. And obviously this is kind of like a needle um, point for the wire, for the arms. Is just like too weak um, and then trying to actually install the arms I did snap off all four connection points on these frames so obviously it's not gonna work because um, the first edition is gonna be in plastic it looks like so that's why we're changing that dimension today uh, I trace out the lenses this is also a mistake I should have taken my CAD document and printed off a one-to-one -one perfect scale uh, cut out of the lens shape instead of doing this manually. Um, and then I also did all the orientation, caught the mic, uh, polarizing film, everything by hand. Um, this took a long time. I think uh, this entire photo shoot and the entire process, all said and done, took over two hours. Um, you know, from there, put everything in. This inset wasn't quite deep enough uh, for the lens recesses, so that's also something that's going to get deepened. Uh, today, and then I did the final assembly. Use a little E6000 around the edges to hold everything together. It's a liquid urethane, um, very clear. And then I weighed it down just to kind of sandwich some of the air out in between those gaps. Um, pretty crude. And then at this point, I realized the wire arms were going to be a really major pain in the butt. Uh, so I just ended up doing kind of like a twisted wire methodology. Also, you can see here the difference between the very first prototype and then essentially these being the second prototype, the size of the lenses is huge, a huge difference. Um, either way, the arms ended up being this kind of like twisted wire dealio. Again, I should have printed off a template um, from the design that I've already made for this and then bent it to that shape just to try and verify it. But I found out really quickly that, you know, this connection area was completely screwed up anyways. This needs to be redone. Uh, so just treating this as a really baseline prototype. Uh, with this, you can see the crazy coloration, um, you know, that comes from the essentially um, white light that comes through. Everything else looks more or less normal, just a little darker, just like normal sunglasses. But reflections, things like that, come out, um, get reflected back into your eyes. as kind of like a rainbow diffraction from striation. So anyways, um, you know, I bent them, got them to fit a little bit, cleaned up my area, and uh, warm around. These are some kind of crappy images of that, but, um, you know, I'll take some better selfies. My remote trigger wasn't working so great for some reason. I think I need to update my camera's firmware. Um, so there you go. Basically, all these experiences, I've been wearing the glasses around for the past, you know, say 12 hours or so. Um, you know, have some feedback for sure from things being made thicker. So that's what that document's for. And here we are, we're back to actual CAD world. So this is a little bit back in time 
Um, this is an earlier version of the file. The reason why I went back is because this has all these different layers that allow me to modify different characteristics um, of like, let's say the instep for the lens mount. Um, this object, you know, I can just scale up, modify. Um, and yeah, you can see where this is like actually different than the previous um, actual printed model. So this is a little back in time. And then this is the lens outline, which I showed just printed off. So, um, and then you can see where there's like a little nose scallop. So it's a fairly simple file. And right now this isn't parametric. Um, it's all kind of modified by hand. So I have to dance around a lot. Um, but right now, just learning a lot about what it takes to design a pair of these. Also worth noting that this current version is completely flat, um, you know, no offset angle whatsoever. Um, that should be swept back one degree for each lens, I think, just because there seems to be a lot of glare from side reflection in the lenses. So you can see kind of in the corner of the eyes here, you can see behind yourself, which is an interesting feature, but it kind of is a little distracting. So I wanna try and do a swept back, you know, one degree difference. It's not gonna be much, but I think it'll make a difference in the end result. So, um, but we'll modify a bunch of other things first before getting into that. So there you go, that's our initial setup document. So the first thing that needs to be done is these arm pivots need to be scaled to 1.6 across. Uh, that number right now is just being derived from what the solder I have lying around is. Um, this goes really easy to manipulate and then I can buy wire drawn to that same dimension. Um, so I'm gonna measure this first and I do that in a little bit of a weird way. Uh, I'm gonna go grab here to here and then shift so that's 1.5. So technically this should be a little bit larger and what we can do that is by 0.6 and then small scale from the space point from the initial and then to our new size I'll get rid of these curves and I have to remember to delete this guy. What I'll do is I'll mirror this across the center plane whenever I'm getting closer to the finish. It'll just be a little cleaner to do it that way. Um, another thing that I need to change is I said I was gonna make um, essentially this pocket here a little deeper. I think that to do that, I actually wanna go like pretty big on it. I mean, wearing the frames, they're incredibly light and I definitely wanna keep them that way, but they could be thicker and I think that that'll give more strength as well. So I'm gonna actually just measure, let's see, how far do I wanna go with this? Just to compare, I'll measure from here to here. So I was saying it's 0.6 millimeters just for that little segment. And that seems like probably a decent amount. I'll just go up that amount again. So to do that, I'll go my solid tools. I will select a surface. I'm gonna select this surface and we're gonna go up 0.6. I'm um, in millimeter system. Actually wanna make sure it flips solid, yes. Not both sides. Perfect. We're good. So that's significantly deeper now. You know, we're like intruding into this geometry. And again, I'll mirror this whenever I get to the other side. Um, and I'm gonna just get rid of this nose rest already for the same reason. I decided, um, you know, looking at this document, you know, the first thing I had was expand the nose bridge. That was because the nose bridge it seemed was a little tight on me, but I ended up saying, you know, it's fine. I actually ended up liking it. This took me a while to get used to it, I think. Rides down on my nose a little bit lower. 
than I initially thought. But I'm just going to leave out the same. And then for the actual nose bridge, um, I think that I like this overall shape, but I definitely want it to be uh, longer down, and I want it to start higher up, and I want to curve out the edges. So I'm going to pick this, and I'm not going to do it like any set amount. I'm just going to do it by eye. I don't want it to intrude on the interior here, but it is okay for it to come inside like this. That's just kind of an arbitrary decision. And I'm going to probably expand it so it goes all the way to the front. And then I'll round it out. I kind of did that with the previous version. I liked it. So this is a decent amount larger. I don't. I like that it doesn't go all the way to the top here. So I want to trim this now. And to do so, I'm going to do some weird nonsense with a curve, I think. So I'm just going to draw like a sketch curve. It's going to go something like eyeballing it here. I can just say I'll start one over, bam. And then again, I'm just eyeballing it to this point. I'm going to make that a lot more extreme here. And then I go a little past, and then I'm gonna draw a box to kind of section that off. So I'll plain, this will give me a planar curve that I can use to cut. I'm gonna select these curves, join. So you can see that's a planar curve now. I'm gonna go 90 degrees. Bam, we have, oh, wrong way. Um, we'll do negative 90 degrees and then I always have to kind of manually bring this up for right now and then I'm gonna switch to a side view and it's gonna be somewhat challenging to see but in this window here I'll shift to so in the right hand view now, you can see this curve that I made and how it's cutting across. So we're at the right height. I think I'm gonna go down a little further. I'm gonna turn off grid snap. So I'm just in manual control, just so I can bring it in. So it's completely cutting inside that volume. I'm actually gonna bring it even further in because there's a little bit of slant and I wanna make sure that it cuts cleanly across both layers. I'm gonna turn grid snap back on and I'm gonna go back into my perspective view. So now we have our happy little curve here. Um, planar, so now I can make, so I can say make hole. And then I'm gonna tell it to cut through this surface. You can see it gone through. And bam, we have that contoured surface now. That looks much, much better in my opinion. And um, like I said, I wanna stretch this down to this point. And I realize that's probably gonna make it quite a bit bigger. Here we go. Yeah, so that's much larger now. This is like a prominent feature all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. But I kinda like it. I think that we'll go with this. And I'm gonna add fillets later. We're not gonna do that first. Everyone knows, I think, why that is. Okay, so we have our expanded holes here. I said I'm gonna, this, uh, I can see this little overlap here, so that's gonna need a change. This is gonna have to at least go out a little bit further. And I have uh, grid snap on right now, so that's why it's, you know, doing funky stuff. And also gonna bring this, I'm probably gonna join this before I do that one degree tilt. And I'm also probably gonna bring the surface up to the front and then taper it in. I think that's the goal again, but one thing at a time. So, and yeah, I don't want to have this like ugly corner anymore. I want it to shift down. I'd rather have the wire bend up and then over the ear. Um, you know, this kind of seam along here is a little obnoxious. We'll see if hopefully that can get resolved. Maybe just a little bit, you know. 
Um, and then I think that this front section might as well also be brought up to this level. There's no harm in going a little bit beefier, I think, with this. And I think that full flat face. Um, oh, well, you know what? I'm actually not going to extend this front of the nose bridge up until I do that um, one degree offset. And I'll bring it up to that one degree offset. So that'll happen in a minute. Um, and I'm just going to straight up delete this entire lens assembly. I don't want that. We're going to mirror it. So, get rid of a couple guidelines. I'm trying to make sure that I didn't forget anything else. So I think at this point, I need to, I need to bring down the surface on that arm. I'm gonna get this into position. And I'm gonna start working this. I just wanna make sure that it's essentially inside of this model. I, I really do want these to actually be overlapping uh, just because everything else can be more or less proportioned and like on a coordinate grid. But I think having a slight stagger offset um, just will look a little better in the end. You won't have the same kind of uh, dimensioning. So I'm gonna extrude this surface up to this point. So I'm gonna go to my solid tools and then I'm gonna extrude a surface. That surface is gonna be this one, this one. Obviously I'm gonna make this transparent for a split second. And for that way, I can go inside of here. Yep. So now I've got everything. I'm gonna switch back to perspective or shaded just because um, that way it'll auto snap to different features actually. And then go bam. I'm trying to bring it down to this surface. I'm running a little slow, I guess, of the recording software. And that looks proper. Oops. Yeah, hate it when that happens. I don't have the fastest computer on the planet, but it definitely works. And of course there's probably an easier way to go through the selection as well, but you gotta work the way that you're used to it, I think. So now we're there. I'm gonna shift my vantage point. There we go. That looks much more reasonable. And just to make sure that doesn't look like complete utter garbage, kind of flip around. Kind of get an, a view for that. That looks okay. Yeah, I kind of like the way that, that stagger view looks perspective wise. I wonder how flat that'll be in the end. I'm just gonna leave that. Yeah. Okay. So we'll say that's a thing. These are already a little rounded out. I think that this channel needs to be cut out larger. And that's kind of unfortunate because I think that the only way to do that, really, that makes sense. Cause this basically is too thin. This needs to be thicker. So the way to do that might be 
to make up um, I think that the way I'll do it is by connecting a bunch of lines and I'll make a surface and then I'll screw that surface up to a definite point somewhere in this body and those will be my two connection points and I'll just redraw the hole through there just because I already have this model built and because I'm lazy <laughs> so let's just do that and I'll have to remember how to actually select a subcurve for this purpose and obviously you can keep seeing snapping to the wrong endpoints. And then I think that curve will be fine. Gotta orbit around the other side. Yep, that's a plane. And then I just gotta connect this. And people wonder why it makes sense to kind of like build modular little unit guys. Um, this is it. <laughs> this is exactly the way that you should be thinking about things sometimes. So I'll go into X-ray here and then make a surface. And we're going to make a surface from a bunch of planar curves. Um, so it already knows I'm looking for that. And then we just have to carefully go around and then make sure that we select a bunch of planar curves. And this will all link up. Sometimes you have to really zoom in on this just because you don't want to miss too many gaps. Um, it doesn't really make a big difference in the long run it seems but there could be errors where your surface has like a small triangle missing this is not complete and then you just end up with a broken solid and that makes STL files unhappy and things so get used to zooming in one of those days and one of these days I'm gonna get a space mouse or something but here we go so I told it make a surface and we should, lo and behold, have a surface now. That one, awesome. So now I have the ability to extrude a solid, and whenever I Boolean union it later, it'll um, just work better. So now we have like a solid section. This is actually probably, I mean, you've noticed I haven't saved in a long time. This is one of those times where it's like, wait a minute, what if I wanna make a solid pair of arms at some point this would be a very very good point to save so I'm gonna go third base but I'm gonna say third two third model second addition and bam so now I'm in a little bit of safer territory um, because this is a mirrored form I can just move this I can mirror it on a different plane and I'll have it reproduced up here so I'll take care of that in a minute hopefully it's making sense so far Okay, right. so I'm going to select the surface and I'm going to switch back to shade it again. Um, this is just going to be like a totally arbitrary thing where I'm going to say I'm going to extrude the surface um, and let's just say two. Yeah, two millimeters. That's pretty, that's pretty decent, you know. And just before I get weird with this mirror and I can do the mirror plane here and bam, we have that reproduced. Um, and then I'm gonna wanna redig these channels as well so that it actually fits with our um excuse me, with the um with the wire we're gonna end up using. So this is definitely getting beefed up. 
you know, that's why we're going this weird with it. Um, but I'm going to draw those curves first. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pick here and I'm going to say, um, pick this point and then oh, this needs to be vertical. So we'll do vertical. Come on, snap to center. Ugh. I hate when this happens. Fine. Just retry this again. Slash vertical. Why will this not work? Do I really need to do this? Fine. Okay. So sometimes it just doesn't want to snap. I don't feel like changing my settings there. Well, Try that again. Now I have a line that I can snap to the center of, and I can say I want to go out this far. Um, you know, um, what would that be? 1.6, right? No, that's actually, it would be 0.75 for this just because we're acting weird. Um, yeah, this is a little bit funky. We're gonna rotate this. Sure, doesn't matter what's negative for positive in this case. So now we have um, that inset hole again. It's obviously much higher up in the body here. Um, and then, yeah, we're gonna basically extract a arc from this and then I don't think I actually did that right. Here I am. This is gonna be okay. I'm gonna actually extend this. And why am I doing so probably today? Oh, and this is again one of those cases where I should mirror things first. So, cool. So now we have two solid connection points. Same for over here. And then now this will serve as the ability to like make a hole. So, um, you know, I'm gonna, again, in this case, I'll probably actually, how do I wanna do this? I want it to be a punch that's gonna go a decent distance, but only halfway. So I might as well have it as a solid. Now I'm gonna make this as a as a curve. So I'm gonna grab join. Can that work? No. Won't let me do that. Can we do make hole? Select planar curves. That doesn't work either. So I need to make a arc. Center the arc. Tell it. Uh, 
pair. I don't know what is going on with this. Why can I not just select that one arc? Nothing? Okay. How oh, this? I'll make an arc manually. Watch it be like rotate inside the model. Some silliness. What is going on here? Why will you not work? Okay. Well, let's do this in two parts. This is sloppy, 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 sloppy. Gosh, I hate this. Okay. There we go. I'm going to take this curve. Mirror it over here. I'm going to grab these curves and I'm going to join them. Ah, there we go. So now we have at least these boxes. This can be used as a cutting module now and just for clarity's sake, I'm going to copy this, I'm going to paste, this is going to get moved up, and it's going to get rotated 90 degrees, and then this is going to get moved through three-dimensional space via this conduit here. I'm going to place it right in between these sites. Go on. And again, this is one of those cases where I probably, unfortunately, need to put a snap line in between. Otherwise, enable midplane selection. I don't know why it's not automatically pulling. And grab this guy. And again, trying to three dimensionally snap through space. I'm going to grab this guy. And I want to move to that point. Awesome. Now I have my cutting tools. I'm going to shift back and to shaded. So with this, now I have more or less my guidelines. I'm going to join this assembly um, just so that I'm cutting into like these objects as a whole so I'm actually going to do boolean union so I'll do this, this, and this enter we'll do some processing real quick and this should now be a solid object now I can cut and manipulate as I desire. So I'm gonna make a circle that's gonna be vertical here. Oh. It's always kind of annoying, but there we go. Once you get it, it's gonna remember I set it to vertical. Right. Now, actually have this and select that curve. This is going to be my cutting tool down the spine. So I'm going to say make hole. And then I'm going to attach to this entity. Bore straight through there. And... 
wait for it to run. Cool. This surface um, now can be deleted. And here we go, we've got a nice clean cut through there. Now, the next thing that we want to take care of is cutting to the halfway point these key slots. So I'm going to select this curve, this one, and this one. I'm only going to do them one direction at a time, obviously. Like this. And then I'm going to say make hole, pick a surface, and I'm going to rotate my camera view to here, up to that surface, and shazam. That looks like a nice keyway. The a lot of material missing. A whole lot of material missing. It's definitely good that I expanded this. I completely foresee maybe having to go even further with that. Or maybe I should just straight up extrude this end panel further right now. I have no idea. I'm just gonna go like this for now. Maybe there'll be a prototype for. So we'll cut this channel now. So I guess put enter again. Tell it to do the same command. Select my cutting objects. Collect the object. Select the object to cut. And I want to do it up to that level. And that also looks pretty gnarly. This little section here is not going to last a second. No way. Interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... I don't know what to do about that. So this is why I think maybe it just makes sense to have the wire arms be like, you know, completely solid entity and this is combined inside of a housing and then maybe that it just hugs. Maybe there's some fastener that binds it at the top. So I'll do a quick sketch of what I'm thinking with that, actually, just for shits and giggles. So you can see what I'm talking about instead of me just rambling like a crazy person. So this is why we do like real design exercises. So basically, if I want to, actually, I'm going to go into this, constraint through the corners. So if I want to make a retaining pin that goes essentially making an arm like so. This is a side profile of it. Um, whatever. It was just exaggerated. So don't take this too seriously, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to build up this silly curve. 